Uh, hello, everybody, and thanks, Andrea and others, for organizing this event. Uh, I suppose that we all share the same feelings that it is difficult to find any sense in preparing a talk on art of the 1970s uh, in a situation when the Russian army is destroying our neighbor's country. Nevertheless, I believe that at this moment, instead of expressing solidarity, sending money and material, material help and welcoming refugees, we as art historians also should continue our work in trying to better understand the different non-institutional as well as official channels of communication. I dedicate my contribution to all the brave Ukraini Ukrainian as well as Russian people who are trying to stop this unprovoked atrocity and keep hoping that uh, light will win over darkness. Um, in a text from 1976, entitled Dokumentovane Umini, or Documented Art, a Czech philosopher and active participant of performances in Prague of the 1970s, Petra Rezek, whom we already heard about today, from Pavlina and Katarin, described his attempt to make a photograph of himself, a self-portrait which actually failed. The resulting black and white photograph, published in one of the Samizdat collections of Rezek's texts, which you can now see on the screen, shows the back of an empty chair, a wardrobe, a table calendar, and a window in the background. According to his own description of the event, the picture was made by mistake, probably by wrongly setting the self-timer. But instead of giving it another try, Rezek decided to accept this photo as his self-portrait. It somehow proved his argument that quote, rather than the document merely testifying to an action taking place, it itself constitutes the meaning of such an action. And of course, that the document not only records what happened, but is itself uh, happening. This helps to create the meaning of the whole and also enables communication with others. In his text, Rezek summarizes the most important issues which we encounter when dealing with the topic of photographic documentation of performance art. This paper is very much based on my already published research, which I begin uh, with the presumption that the study of photographic documentation is one of the possible ways of approaching Czech performance art of the 1970s. It is known fact that the situation in Czechoslovakia differed from Poland and Hungary and was influenced by the fact that the two most important Czech art magazines were canceled by the state officials in the early 1970s. And there was almost no possibility to exhibit or perform in public as the risks of having troubles with the secret police were high. Typically, only a handful of friends attended live events while the piece had to cross the state borders by, by means of photographic documentation in order to find a broader secondary audience. An ordinary postal envelope with photographs sent between artists, curators, or collectors usually did not attract the attention of the censors and made it possible to get this type of art beyond the borders of Czechoslovakia. Indrik Halupetsky described the resulting situation of the Czech artists with the following words, quote, abroad they are well known, at home, their names won't ring a bell, save for a modest circle of very close friends." End of quote. The missing institutional footing was therefore partially substituted by reproductions in foreign magazines and photographs distributed for exhibitions abroad. My attempt here is not only to summarize some of those thoughts, but also to update them a bit with regard to my actual insight based on what I learned from photography studies while working on a five-year project on Josef Sudek and his photographs of artworks. Here I will quote Mary Bergstein, who wrote on the topic in the early 1990s already in relation to photographs of sculpture, but her conclusion is still valid and is very relevant also for our material. Quote, photographs of sculpture are as culturally determined as datable as self-referential and as individual as the verbal art historical essays that accompany them. And they will vary as much, as, as much in imagination 
and enduring quality, end of quote. Along with other art historians at that time, she began asking questions which related to the function of photographs of artworks with greater intensity. At around the same time, an interest in materiality of photography appeared in photography studies, with the attention of researchers shifting to photographs as objects and to their social lives in specific times and places. In recent years, a series of conferences on photographic archives, the publication of the Florence Declaration, which aimed to draw attention to the value of analog archives in a digital era, and publishing an exhibition project confirmed the validity of such a material approach also in the field of the photographic documentation of art. Studying photographic documentation thus means untangling complex networks of agents, works, and their various relationships and functions, always with a view to the specific use of the given image. Based on this approach, and on the examples from the 1970s Czech art scene, what actually is the photographic documentation of performance art? What I already showed you was one of my favorite pieces, the performance called Connection, made by Petr Stembera and Tom Marioni in Prague in 1975. What I'm showing you now is how we usually approach it today as a high-risk quality image viewed on the screen. The concept of networking seems to materialize in the sweet circles with trapped ants on the performers' bodies. But uh, the documentation materialized itself as well in many different forms, in negatives of various sizes, in the film field selected as an ideal representation of the performance, in printed cards with a photomechanical reproduction on this, of this particular image, uh, uh, the printing block included. Mm -hmm. Let's now extend the scope to other examples. Usually there is a number of black and white photographs of different quality made by somebody who attended the event and a negative, in this case, a 35 millimeter film. Um, there might be one particle photograph selected by the author, sometimes even signed or authorized retrospectively. Sometimes there are also some color slides. And we already saw the photograph which appeared in a Samizda publication. And of course, photomechanical reproductions printed on leaflets, invitation cards, posters, books, period magazines, or exhibition catalogs. If Tomasz Pospisil once compared the photographic documentation of performance art to the photos taken by the secret police, then instead of comparing the respective images, its content and aesthetics, we are now rather speaking about the photographs held in secret files, which Tomasz also did in his Associative Art History, where he mentions the activities of Tomasz Ruler, who in 1985 used photographic documentation of his performances as evidence at a court hearing. Um, I personally also came across a similar issue while researching Milan Knizak's files in the secret police archives from his interrogation in 1974 related to a mail delivery reportedly same by, sent by him to Paris Biennial, which he denied, and which in addition, which in, apologies, in which in addition to other seized materials also contained many photographs, now glued into a bundle. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show the images here, but, we may assume that there are at least three levels of approaching the photographic documentation of performance art. First, the photograph is used as evidence, which in itself is not worthy of attention. Second, we are aware of the photograph itself, and we are interested in questions related to how the image looks like and what is behind it, such as uh, how the motif was framed, who is the photograph's author, and so on. And third and finally, 
we see the concrete photograph in its actual material appearance. In this perspective, we are not only interested in what happened in front of the camera and who pressed the trigger, but also we might approach the image through the respective materiality in a specific situation of its use in order to trace its material life. And here I quote Elizabeth Edwards, who brought the material approach to studying photographic histories. Quote, materiality translates the abstract, the abstract and representational photography in photographs as objects that exists in time and space or elsewhere. Quote, materiality is closely related to social biography this view, which has emerged from the material turn in anthropology over recent years, argues that an object cannot be fully understood at any single point in its existence, but should be understood as a belonging in a continuing process of production, exchange, usage, and meaning." End of quote. Let's uh, take a look at production, exchange, usage, and meaning in the context in which we are speaking now. Again, I'm going to quickly go through some examples which might be relevant. We already saw Karel Miller, Karel Miller in front of his prints exhibited on the wall of Petr Rezek's apartment. Uh, also, we saw those photomechanical reproductions in Flash Art magazine. Uh, what we can't see uh, are photographs sent in the postal envelopes to Henrik Gajewski's postbox uh, in Warsaw. Uh, but here we can see um, photographs uh, or the documentation of uh, Petr Stembera in the hands of Belgian collector and creator Roger Dont. Photographic documentation was also used as a kind of substitution to the artist's presence. That's how Piotr Olszanski put it in a letter to, sent to Petr Stembera in relation to the Works and Words International Art Manifestation organized in 1979 uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, to conclude, the already mentioned Petr Rezek wrote about photographic documentation as a solid clue that allows communication with others. Speaking about the Czech context and leaving aside the different financial and technical possibilities, the photographic documentation was not exceptional in itself. It was used as an easily reproducible medium as a lingua franca of performance art. But if we want to provide deeper analysis of aesthetical choices and the general characteristics of the medium, its credibility and veracity, there is no time to go into detail here and speak also about the fact that photography not only tell, tells the truth, but also can speak falsely. We need to approach it not only as an image, but as an object with its own histories as well. We mustn't be satisfied with the fact that it is a lingua franca that we all understand, but must be interested in various dialects, ideologues, and sociolects and their specific personal use. Application of an intelligible language does not mean that the same information is communicated or that it is necessarily used in the same way. Igor Zabel stated that we may regard the presumed uh, non-aesthetics photographs and the systematic character of documentation found in Iri Kovanda's work as a new type of poetic visual and verbal language. The goal of this presentation was to show that those photographs have had very interesting biographies and that it was never only about the aesthetics of authorized or signed documentation now held in the museum collections, but also about all the other various materialities in which the photographs appeared and which are less valued by the art market, but which has also fundamentally shaped the way how performance art from the 1970s has been perceived and understood. Thank you.